Hi, George here. And today we're going to test it out and see if we can make a realistic looking background just using AI to replace this background in here with this nice dog picture. Now, before we move on to that, I just want to remind everybody that all of my new Photoshop Elements videos are going to be moving over to my photo channel, HTG Photo. I'll put a link for that in the description in just about a week. So if you enjoy my Photoshop Elements videos, make sure you go over there to HTG Photo and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the new videos going up. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, the first thing we need to do is to remove the background. So I'll show my layers. It's a button right down here. Here's the layers. As always, I'll make a duplicate of the background. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. There's our background layer. I got this picture off of Pixabay. It's a great site, free images to work on. Let me show you where you can find this to download. And here we go. To use this, just go ahead and type in a search up in here. You can choose to search for photos, illustrations, vectors, even videos and music or sound effects. The one I found, I was doing a search for a dog in a field and we have this right here. Then to download this over here, it says download. And for our demonstration here, you want the 1920 by 1285 download. Go ahead and download that one. And that's the same image that I'm using in this video. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And we're back here again. Now, one of the reasons I like this particular photo, I've used it a few times, it just is a little bit easier to work with because the dog's whiskers don't go into the background, making it easy to make a selection. If you had your whiskers going into the background, it's very difficult to keep those whiskers. They're just too small for most selections. So, easy selection. I'll switch over here to the standard lasso tool. And I'll make a quick lasso just outside not going over the dog. Now, if you do it by accident, if you accidentally hit the dog, that's okay. But it's a little bit cleaner if you don't. And then just make a nice quick selection right around the dog here. And go clear down around the bottom. A little bit of hairs right there. I'll keep those in. And then come off the bottom and across down here, up the left-hand side. Cross over your beginning. And here's our basic selection. We can now clean this up with the Refine Edge tool. Normally, I'll set this at one or two pixels. I'll go ahead and I'll do one right now. It just softens the edge just a little bit, making it a little bit cleaner. Refine edge. There we go. Now over here, I have this set at overlay. And most of the time, I'll leave these settings alone, although sometimes having a bit of contrast in here can help make the edge just a little bit cleaner. I'll give it just a little bit of a boost, about a third of the way up on that. And then you see the brush size right there on his nose. I could go bigger on that brush, but that's the default size, 35. I'll keep that. And let's just go right along the edge here. I'm just brushing right over the edge. I like doing this in little strokes. There we go. So that Elements doesn't have to think too much about doing that fix. If you go clear around, it can take a little longer. Sometimes it's a little bit more messy. So I found that just a little short movements like this tends to work out better. And we'll go clear around and just go right over where we are seeing that green edge. And that's the inside of the selection. The part that needs to get removed in here. Now you can do a couple like this, you know, out a bit further and then come in a bit further if your edge is too large or too wide. That's not a problem. Sometimes you have to do that if you're dealing with some fur or hair or things. Now this is best done for hair and a lot of times I won't even do this around a figure. I'll just use it just for the hair part. But of course, dog has fur. It can be little, little thin hairs and so forth all along the edge. Okay, that should take care of the background for us. Let's come down here. At this point, I can do a new layer with layer mask that saves my existing layer as a copy. We've already done that. Let's just do layer mask right here. Choose OK. And here's a layer mask with that background removed. Now there is some green tinge down in here. You can see that pretty easily now. It's a little bit of a green edge along the background up in here. That shouldn't be a problem because we'll be doing a background which is similar to the existing background, but different. We may need to clean up a little bit of a couple spots, but not too much. So here's our first step, and that is just to remove the background. We have that, of course, on a new layer. Let's now go over to AI and see if it can make a nice new background to put in here that it's going to match the picture. Before I do that, I'm just going to save this. Go up here to File, and let's do a Save As, so I can rename this. And I'll put it over in my Projects folder, which is right here. 
and let me just give this a new name. Notice I'm saving it as a PSD file it's because I have layers. So you want to have that. I'll call it dog field. Choose save and there we go. Okay, let's switch over to AI. And we'll be using Stable Diffusion XL. This is a free tool. There is a paid version. It's not very expensive. Let me show you that first. If you like this tool a lot, the paid version can speed things up a little bit and give you access to more tools. Go up here to pricing. It's only $9 a month, which is not that expensive. And it gives you a lot of images in here. Annual is even cheaper if it's amortized over the whole year. And back here to this page. Now I'll put this link in the description so you can get right to this page. All you have to do is describe what it is that you want. We'll call it a field of daisies in the spring. And I'll do puffy clouds in the sky. Let's try some puffy clouds in the sky so you don't have solid clouds. Sometimes you get really accurate responses here. Sometimes it may be a little bit odd. So you have to try it and see what happens. Now right here, inside of Stable Diffusion, you can try different settings. I normally start with no style first and see what we get. If I want it adjusted, I can then try to change the look depending upon what I'm doing. For instance, I might want to go here for a photographic or possibly cinematic. Those two would fit, or maybe even analog film. All of those would fit my style that I'm trying to go for. But I think we'll get pretty close with this. Choose Generate. Now, this is one of those things that you won't get if you're paying the $7 a month. Right here it says 36 images waiting to be processed. These are other people's images, and you won't see that either if you're doing the paid version. But as you can see here, it's not that difficult. It's pretty fast. It will give you four choices in here. Obviously, this will not work for our image because the flowers are too large. Bottom right-hand corner where it says Clip Drop right here, this is also not going to be included if you do their paid version. It's just a little watermark on the free versions. Not a big deal. Now we can try different ones here. That's no good. That's not too bad. I think this is actually usable. And then this again is too close for our image. So I could use this one if I wanted to. You can try it again. Now all of this, this is brand new stuff here. These are not photographs that I grabbed from some website. It actually created this based upon its knowledge of what things look like and based upon what we were asking for inside of our prompt. Let's click on the plus sign. We'll skip this again. Now I've seen this as high as the 500s, which can take a few minutes to go ahead and process. It depends upon how many people are using the site at this very moment. Normally it's like this and it's only going to be just a few seconds, you know, 5, 10, 15 seconds for it to give you your images. So the free version is pretty fast. Okay, this is a little bit nicer. A little bit smaller down here, a little bit more of a sky. A little higher up on that. I think this is even better for us. That's not too bad. So these are actually much nicer. I kind of like this one. This looks real natural. I like all the trees in the background back here, the puffy clouds. Let's go ahead and we'll do this one. It's not as green as I would like. We can fix that, of course, over inside of Photoshop. And these are fairly small images. So we're going to have to up-res this as well. Now on the paid version, you can do that right here. On the free version, you can't. But you can do a two times up res, but I want to do four times. So we'll use a different program for that. Let's download this. And I'll put it in the same folder as our Photoshop file. Now these are from a video a couple of videos ago. I just haven't removed those yet. And let's choose save. And we've now saved that. That's done. Okay. Now I want to make this a larger image. Let's just first see what size this is so you know why I want to up res this. Let's go back over to Photoshop Elements. And I'll bring that image in. That's File Open. Right here. And my image comes in as a floating window. This is a nice little trick. And that's up here under Edit. Come down to Preferences. The first option, General. And it's that checkbox right there, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. Make sure that is checked. It just makes it easier when you're working in the program. I'll drag this over here and drop it in. And you see it's fairly small. If we made this two times as big, it would probably fit just fine. But I want to go larger than that. I want to reduce this in here to fit and not stretch it out. So but we'll go ahead and we'll up res this. I'm going to put this in behind. You can see there's the general idea right in there. And that's going to work out well for us. Okay, let's just delete that. And let's go back over to a different AI tool. And it's right here. It's the image to go upscaler tool. Choose File. 
And we'll choose that one right here, choose open. It's initializing this. Once it has been initialized, it knows what it is. We can then choose our upscale. I'm gonna go four times. So you have a choice of two times or four times here. Four times is usually pretty good. I'll leave everything else alone. Choose start. And we'll let this upscale that image. This is actually pretty fast when it does this. It may say that it's gonna be taking a long time. You can not worry about that. It goes pretty quickly on most images, at least that I've been working with in here. Again, you ignore that up here. It's gonna be done in just a moment. As a matter of fact, there we go. That's finished, even while I'm talking about it. Okay, it's been finished. Your converted file is right here. We can go up to the cloud or download. I'll be doing a download or bring it down to the zip file if you need to. As for bigger images, ours is not that big. Now we'll put it back in the same location. Now notice that this has the same name as this one with just a one appended to it. So I'll rename this at this point. I'll just call it new field, choose save, and that's done. Okay, let's switch back over to Photoshop Elements. Here we go, and let's open up our new background, file, and open. New field, there we go. If I bring that in, you see now it's a much bigger image. So we can now reduce it to fit instead of having to expand it to fit. I'm gonna find the top edge up here, which is over here someplace, there we go. Grab the corner and then I'll drag that down. That'll reposition. This is my standard procedure here. I don't mind doing this to work with the size of an image. If I'm bringing it down, it tends to retain detail just fine. I don't like to expand to make a small image bigger, but I don't mind making a larger image smaller. Okay, now I just want to decide how much of this field I want. Now the original was kind of like this or it's just background. It's one of the reasons why I didn't want to keep that background. Here's that watermark. It isn't a copyright thing. These are copyright free, but it's just in the way. But that's okay because I'm pulling this down. In any case, I want to have some of that sky showing in here. And I think something kind of like that looks pretty good. We'll keep that, hit that green check mark. There's a new background. Now it's not as bright as I would like. Let's show our original background in here. So this is much, much brighter. I want to have that same kind of feel on this one. So for that, Let's switch over here to layer, new adjustment layer. We'll do a couple in here. First, I'll do hue and saturation. Where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. And I'll come right here where it says saturation. Let's just bring our saturation up a bit. There it gets more of that green. Don't go too far, it gets you know kind of weird looking. But a bit more saturation brings back in some of that green that we're missing. And I think in here looks a bit better. There we go. And let's also adjust our contrast values in here. So for that, Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer and Levels. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. And here we have our blacks, left-hand side, whites, right-hand side, and the mid-tones middle. I always like to bring the blacks up just a little bit. It increases the contrast and the whites in just a little bit. And then I'll go to the left with this, and that lightens the whole mid-range up. I just want to find a spot that looks looks nice in here. And I think that looks pretty good. That's just about what I want. It's very similar to the values of the original. But we now have some sky in here. We now have some trees in here. We have some flowers. So the background is much more interesting than the original shot. Now I see just a little bit of a green tinge up here around the top edge of our dog. We can take care of that. Let's go over to the dog picture. Two ways, I could come in and try to limit the mask up here, make the mask tighter to clean that in, or an easier way is just to take this to a different value. So we'll try that, we'll try to cut our mask in. I'll grab the zoom tool, we'll zoom in on this. We can bring that in a little bit on a couple of spots. So this is over on the layer mask side. We wanna go to our paintbrush, set our foreground color at black. We want a pretty small brush. You can see there's that brush size right there on his forehead. And I'm gonna paint in here on the black and just kind of cut in just a little bit like that. And minimize how much of that green is showing, just a little bit. And we'll take care of these edges in a different technique. This is kind of the first major cleanup on this, just to get rid of most of the problem. Okay, that looks good. 
Let's now convert the green over to just a gray scale. And for that, switch over here to the image side of our layer, double click, there's the image side. Look for that light blue outline that tells you which side you're on on your layer. And then over here, click on where it says burn tool. Normally it's gonna be showing like that, like a solid magnifying glass dodge tool. Come down and switch this over to sponge. You wanna have desaturate. I have my settings about halfway in here. Brush size is too big, let's bring our brush size down a lot. Let's see, come into the soft edge brushes, maybe a 13. 13 is pretty good, or a 17. We'll go with a 17 brush on this. The size will depend upon your image. Now what this will be doing is taking out the color and basically converting the color into a black and white. So it's going to remove that green tinge for us and leave us with just a little bit of a gray edge, which is perfectly fine. So we'll just brush along this edge. Since I have my settings kind of low in here, 50% flow, it's not gonna go real fast to give us more control. It means it takes it a little bit longer, but having better control is the way to go on this. As soon as we hit the green background, it no longer matters because then the green blends into the background. So only on the parts where you see some green showing up here along the sky. And once those are converted into a gray tone, they will blend in very naturally. Work our edge along over here. There we go. And right down this side, and there you go, it's now a gray tone as opposed to a green tone. So we've taken out that color fringing. All right, let's zoom back out to fit screen. I'll just use the control zero keyboard shortcut. There it is, you no longer see any green edge up there and we're all set. So you see how easy it is to create a new background here using AI and the nice thing about this is it's exactly what I was looking for. I don't know if I could have found a nice green feel with daisies and some puffy clouds by doing searches on the different photo image sites. Could have taken me forever, I may not have found what I wanted to, but this is perfect. It gave me exactly what I wanted very quickly. And because this is a brand new image, there is no copyright on this, no worries about that. And as you saw, we can try it a few times until we get exactly the look that we want for our images. So here's a way that I like using AI. I'm not into using AI for foreground subjects. I like to stick with photographs on this, but if the background is not as critical, I just want a different look back there, then using AI is a very easy way to go. Now don't forget, I'll be moving all of my new Photoshop Elements videos over to the new HTG Photo channel in only about a week. As soon as September gets here, all the videos will be over there at that point. The old stuff stays here. There's no good way for me to move old videos to a different channel here on YouTube. So they're all staying where they are, but all the new stuff will be over there. We'll be going back over there and revisiting the most popular videos and I'll do updated versions of those. So I have videos over there for the most popular concepts, most popular videos I've done. So I'll have all of that, plus of course, a lot of new stuff, everything else is over there. I already have my Photoshop videos over there and my Affinity Photo videos over there. So the last one to go is the Elements. So starting in just about a week, beginning September 1st, make sure you go over to HTG Photo to find the new videos here for Photoshop Elements. Also, don't forget to take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements and I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. If you enjoyed this video, consider sending me a thanks. That's a little thanks button right down there right below the bottom right hand corner of the video. And I'll see you next time.